Finally, we've got the Juiced Cross Currents. I apologize, people have been asking about this bike for a long, long time. And uh, Sam, I visited your shop when you had like one of the early versions and maybe it wasn't quite dialed in. And it was like the, a beta unit. It was a beta unit, yeah. And the, the guy uh, who runs this company is a perfectionist. He goes to China, I think he speaks Mandarin. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, uh, just like engineer, he's like, I want it to be perfect. So yeah, he's over it all the time. And yeah, Tora, yep. good guy, good guy. So, you know, anyway, finally we got one, it's red, it looks awesome. The only thing about it that you might notice isn't stock is the seat. And why is that, Sam, what happened? Uh, we had a guy that came in and bought a uh, high bike and he didn't want the high bike seat. He wanted the seat off of this bike. He pointed <laughs> right to that seat. So I said, no problem, I'll take the seat off for you. That is rare, like someone actually wants the seat that comes with the e-bike. And I guess it's like a Selly Royale and it has the little, these little windows in it. It's a lot like this seat. See, you got the windows. This one's just wider, so they have a more active version that comes on the Juice Cross Current. This is a very active bike. Man, I feel like I feel like Tora was listening to me, or maybe just his inner like little spirit about what to include because it, it's like it does everything. And how much is it? I mean, it's like fifteen, fourteen ninety five, or fourteen ninety nine. I mean, yeah, fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. Stock size battery. That's incredible. That's to me, that's incredible because you've got rack bosses back here. You've got bottle cage bosses. You've got a pretty nice looking, handsome, like down to mounted battery. You've got a suspension fork with some adjustability right here. It's, it's a speed pedal. Like this thing goes above 20 miles per hour, but unfortunately, maybe not much above. I mean, it, it's, they say like 28 mile per hour, but it's, you gotta be pedaling pretty hard. Yeah, I, I cruise it uh, between 20 and 25 is what, as, and I'm not, you know, a Superman by any means, but with the uh, system that's in place, it rewards you the harder you pedal it. Yeah. And I'm only gonna pedal a certain amount, you know, as far as right. the torque well, that I'm putting out with my legs. It uses a torque sensor, TMM4. That's what they use on the easy motion bikes and stuff. So you do have to exert yourself a little bit more, but it's really fluid, right? Yes. And you do have quite a few levels of assist here. So you've kind of got like the eco super low, and then you can arrow up to one, two, or three. And then tell me about that so boost from, button. So any position, let's say you're like cruising along on level two assist, you can hit the boost button and it'll go straight over. And then you hit it again and it'll go back to where you left off. So That's I could sweet. be on level one and go straight over to boost, or I could be on level three and go to boost and come back. So it's like a, it's like a turbo override when you get to that hill or you see your friend that you wanna catch up with. And they also offer a throttle option, right? Correct, that's an aftermarket accessory you can purchase separately to, mm -hmm. to install on the bike. Yep. And um, you know, for people, sometimes it's nice to have a throttle, we don't have that on this one, but we do have, what size is this? You said this is the XL. Yeah, it comes in three sizes. You get a medium, a large, or an extra large, and either black or red. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty awesome. So you get different sizes and everything. Uh, you know, and coming back to the suspension fork, we're not talking about a lot of travel, but enough that it makes it comfortable. Pro Max riser bars, enough that it brings it back a little bit. A saddle that makes you feel pretty good, that's awesome. And the tires, these are 700 by 45C, 28 by 1.5, uh, one and five eighths inch. I, they're pretty thick is what I'm trying to say. The, the diameter here is, bigger than normal. It's not like a road bike tire that's super narrow that doesn't feel good. Um, so that's like, you know, three things right there that are designed to make it four things, suspension, riser, uh, seat, and then the, the tires. So they, they did more than just like cheap bike that goes fast. They actually really scrutinized the decisions that they made. And you can see that there's a much larger chain ring up front and that's designed to help you hit and maintain those higher top speeds. Um, because it does only have one chain ring. And then in the back, we've got Shimano, Alivio, component group, decent decent derailleur, nine speeds. So you really have a lot of choices right here, whether you're climbing with this thing or trying to go up a hill and you need to shift down. Tectro Dorado, hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter rotors. And you need that for stopping when you're going fast too, which is nice. No quick release in the rear, but you do get quick release up front. and. I find that that's nice if you're someone who was trying to toss this into your car. I turn my handlebar sideways, take off the wheel, and then it lays really flat. It's really nice that way. Other things that I really like is the Welgo pedals. Check that out. And these aren't the ones that have like the adjustable pins on them, but they're, they're decent. They're better than just kind of the plastic ones or the really narrow metal ones. So I, I like that. It's gonna give you better grip. They just look nice. You don't have to spend the extra money going online buying those things yourself and we come over to the other side and it does come with a kickstand that's something that a lot of electric bikes kind of forego surprisingly 
and it does have a kickstand mount so you could get a different one if you wanted this one's a little bit shorter and i heard something about like a boot kind of coming off the bottom occasionally um so i love that they did that schrader valves we've got the nipples like actually on the rim that's another little little upgrade and what were you saying about the kickstand sam uh, it comes with a boot, but uh, he actually gave me a spare boot, and I've lost both boots on this because they crack. And this is Tor's first try at, at building a, red, a road bike, actually. Hmm. Uh, something else I want to point out on this bike that we've seen as an, an issue uh -huh. for a few of them are the spokes on the back. Oh. So anybody that buys this bike, you want to take it back to the dealer you bought it from, uh, or if you bought it online, take it into a bike shop and have them lace up and tighten the rear spokes. That is one issue on this bike that I've noticed has uh, surface are they 12 gauge spokes i mean they look really thick yeah they are but uh they need to be tightened they seem to come a little on the loose side well this one actually feels really tight hmm. so maybe this one's good but check those spokes is what i'm saying remember to keep your tires inflated and this is a 350 watt eight fun yep. on that so it's it's interesting because it's like what were the battery choices again uh seven i think it's 10.4 or 10 10 and a half yeah and then they're actually working on i talked to them this morning about bringing in the 23 amp hour battery wow i think the key thing with tor on this bike was he was trying to get it at a certain price point yeah i mean how many bikes are at a 1500 dollars price point that have hydraulic brakes yeah you know what i mean and a speed pedelec mm -hmm. that is a i don't know if it's a game changer or not but i know other manufacturers adjusted their price based on this bike this was a key, it's disruptive keystone bike that definitely caused other people to adjust their prices. And does uh, this one, do you have to, it, it's got the same upgrade, so you don't have to pe press that before correct. you turn on the display. The beta unit you did, the, the production yep. model you do not. That's awesome, because it's just an extra step. And I was gonna try to take this off. So is 36 by 10 and 10.5, or no, is this, this their is 48? This is the uh, 48 by seven amp hour. So it's a much smaller battery hmm. than perhaps like that Momos we were looking at earlier. So that is going to vary on the weight of the bike. This says 48 volts by 7.8. So yep. yeah, you get the kind of the higher voltage and that might support some of the higher speed. I'm still surprised that it's only a 350 watt hub motor, but some of the early uh, easy motion bikes, they use the Dapu hub motor. They use the torque sensor. They're very similar to this and they would go above 20 miles per hour. So, you know. Yeah, let's point out some other things. I've seen battery packs like this where you charge from the side. This one's on the bottom and it's kind of difficult to oh, get to yeah. when it's on the bike. You know, you've got to open this flap up right here and kind of fish your charger in down here. And you'll also next notice next to the charger port is the USB port. But mm -hmm. on this particular run of batteries, it is not connected. So don't expect to be able to charge anything off your USB port. Yeah. They had an issue with it uh, draining the battery. So the USB port on the first gen is disconnected. It is not uh, usable. Okay, awesome, Sam. Did you have another story or something? You were talking about something earlier. You were like, oh yeah, we were using these. And then you're like, oh, I'll tell you. Oh, video. we went down to the desert to uh, Desert Hot Springs <laughs> actually. And I took this bike and stick, stuck it underneath my motorhome in my storage. Sweet. And I rode this bike all the way to Desert Hot Springs and back, which is about a 40 mile ride. Wow. And there was a bit of a wind blowing that day and the <laughs> sand was blowing across. It was about a hundred degrees. But as long as you got the wind blowing past you, you know, just your throat gets a little dried out, but I wasn't sweating too badly. And it performed fairly well for me. A little bit rough road out there. I don't think this is high end suspension. So I was feeling the road a little bit more yeah. than on the other bike that we were swapping back and forth with me and my wife. Mm -hmm. But it performed fairly well for doing about a 40 mile ride. I was impressed. Now I could not make a 40 mile ride, I don't believe, with a stock battery. So I had the larger 10 and a half amp hour battery to do that okay. ride. Yeah, that's good to know. And by the way, 27.2 millimeter seat post diameter for those times when you do want to go further, if you're commuting, maybe you've got a rack, you add some fenders or something. The seat post suspension can really smooth things out. Thud buster, body float. Or, you know, there are some cheaper ones online. I think Suntour even has one. Thanks for adjusting that. So this is an extra large. Um, I'm gonna hop on it, you know, give it a go and try to give you guys some feedback. I know we didn't weigh it, did we? Can I grab my scale yeah, real quick? We'll, we'll, get, we'll get it weighed. Okay, so we just weighed it. This is the extra large. It weighs about 52 pounds, but that's with the small battery. So keep in, in mind as you get larger battery capacity, um, you know, you're gonna add some weight, but not not terrible, you know, kind of in that 50 pound range, um, you know, that's acceptable, especially for a longer distance, uh, potentially higher speed bike, once you get, get those battery upgrades. Yeah, fun bike, I, I enjoyed riding this bike and uh, put it through its paces. Yeah, it's neat, good job, Juiced. Okay, I'm making sure that the tires are in decent shape here. It's a good thing to do before you ride. This one's a little bit low in the back, but I think we're gonna make it. Okay. Power it up, 
just got the five dot battery level indicator up here, 20% on each dot. Um, I might start out in eco, just see if I can even feel anything. Yeah, I notice it. Like I hear, I hear and feel just a light, light assist. Uh, one of the drawbacks about using LED is that, you know, there, there's no speed readout here. It's just, you're just kind of estimating. And that's part of why it's like, well, am I really going fast? I, I don't know if that was a conscious decision. It's probably a cost-saving decision. Um, but let's, let's take it up a little bit. Take it all the way up to three. Okay, I'm feeling, definitely feeling it. Really quiet. Quite responsive too. I mean, that's the thing about the torque sensor versus cadence. You do have to push, but it responds almost immediately and cuts out a lot quicker. And now I think it's time for that sport mode. It's really riding smoothly. I mean, I can tell a difference. I don't know if it's the rear hub. Uh, maybe it's the the derailleur and stuff is actually just smooth the bike the bike's really tuned up right um, come to appreciate that when you try some of the cheaper bikes a lot of bikes in this price range while i was riding i wanted to point out that this does have velo locking grips a lot of the touch points are just you know kind of branded upgraded neko neko stem neko headset you know am i like super super thrilled and like oh my gosh like it's a speed pedal like wow uh, no, no, I'm not. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like amazing power. You know, of course I don't have a, a throttle, but I think they geared it to be a little bit more smooth, gentle versus like power right from, right from the get go, just to make it last a little bit longer to extend that range. It seems like it's geared for like weaker high speed than powerful torquey low speed. And that's what you want for a speed pedal. But we are working with that 350 watt motor down here. Yeah. And you can see there's like kind of a stamp on there bfswxo2 48 volt 350 watt so uh, you know i'm still happy with the bike and it's it's kind of neat that you can get a bike relatively affordably that that looks nice that's balanced that's got that open triangle so you can actually put this on the back of your car and take it around that way it, it blends in like it's it's a nice bike and i don't want to complain too much just because the price is low but if this was a higher priced bike and I was comparing it to like a Specialized Turbo or a Stromer or something like that where you really feel like, oh man, this is fast. It doesn't, it doesn't deliver that it kind of experience. Um, and again, it's a gearless or the, this is a geared hub versus gearless. So there's no regenerative braking or any of that, that other fancy stuff, but it keeps it light. That 52 pounds we were talking about. And I think it's smart of them to do kind of the price tiering where it's like $1,500, but that's with the smallest battery and no throttle and stuff. And maybe you don't need those things. So maybe that's fine. I do appreciate those brakes and you can see they've got the big nub at the end. I think that's a requirement in Europe for speed pedal X, right? So that your hands don't slide off as easily because you're going faster. It's like a DOT type of thing. Okay, I got Strava out. I'm gonna race this thing around and see how fast we actually go. Okay, just finished. Found myself in gear nine, pedaling kind of slowly but hard. I could hear the motor going in the background, not adding a ton of extra power, uh, but I was able to hit a max speed of 31.1 miles per hour doing that. So it didn't feel so much like it's really assisting me and I can consistently stay at that speed. It felt more like when I exert myself, it will go that fast and the motor is kind of there in the background helping, but it's a different experience.
Okay, now on that ride, I actually just pretended I was on any other bike, pedaled when, in a way that felt comfortable to me, at kind of a higher cadence, and I wasn't standing up or anything. I used Strava again, and that time I got 27.7 .7 miles per hour, so yeah, it's a speed pedal, like it works. Uh, maybe it just takes a little bit longer, and it doesn't quite have that like torque that uh, I've come to just sort of expect maybe, or just, it, you know, it's, it's a the lighter when that happens. You're like, whoa, this thing's fast, but that doesn't mean that this is bad in any way. And I think given the price point and the fact that it does go well above 20 miles per hour, that would significantly improve your commute time. You know, it's, that's kind of what they're going for here. So that's awesome. Well, I finished the test ride. I'm back here at the shop, uh, just recording some of the details and prepping the write up. Uh, thinking about all the other bikes that I've reviewed over the years, and these are ones that are getting repaired and stuff in the back. Uh, and I just wanted to say, you know, this this has delighted me. Like the cross current, it was a little bit questionable at first because I was like, huh, you know, 350 watt motor and how hard do you have to work? And if you just, if this was just a 20 mile per hour electric bike with all these great features for 1500 bucks, I mean, that would still be ahead of a lot of the competition. You know, maybe the battery's a little bit on the small size, the, the stock one, but the fact that they've opened it up and let it go faster and then just added so many little little extra features, some of those delighters, things that I call out on other bikes. I mean, there's really a lot to appreciate with this bike. I can understand um, why people were so excited about it and you know, interested in getting a review. I can see why it's kind of sold out. I love that it comes in those multiple sizes. And you know, I just kind of wanted to like take that second approach, like let it sink in a little bit and be like, yeah, it does achieve those higher speeds. Maybe in part because I'm 135 pounds, Sam is like, you know, 250 or something like that. Like quite a bit heavier than me. You know, he maintains that he was only getting it up to maybe like the 25, 24, 25. Um, I don't know if he did Strava the way I did and everything. I try to be uh, you know, objective, data driven, right? So I was doing doing that for you guys. I, I hope it, um, you know, hope it gives you an accurate picture. I think they've made the compromises that they've had to, to keep that price low. And, and I like what they've come out with. So anyway, I just wanted to break it down real quick before closing out. Um, remind you that I've got the full written review back at electricbikereview.com. Chime in with those comments and thoughts you might have. And of course, especially with the Speed Pedelec, ride safe.